I've been meaning to do this tutorial for a long time now, so my apologies for the delay. And also, I usually like to build the element during the tutorial, but I have been running into the 10 minute YouTube time limit, so I'm going to have to discuss it pre assembled. So hopefully, you can follow along. So, the initial conditions are the speed is 38 meters per second, the y position is 5 meters, although that's not really important, and the heart line is 0.9 meters. And we'll use five curved pieces to assemble this top hat. And there are various knobs that you can turn to adjust the shape, and we'll discuss that at the end. So the first piece, uh, the entrance into the top hat is made from two curved pieces, as you can see here. And the roll occurs during the second uh, curved piece. So the first uh, section is, again, a curved geometry. It has an angle of uh, 50 degrees. The lead-in angle, which determines uh, the transi transition between the straight piece that would come before it uh, to the curved part of it, of uh, 30 degrees. A lead-out angle of 0 degrees. And the reason we have a lead-out angle of 0 is so it will smooth smoothly connect up to the next section. The radius I've set to 30 meters, uh, but this is something that you'd want to change depending on the entrance speed. And the direction is 90 degrees, that's just so the, the curve is going up. And also, to help us out later, you'll want to set the exit speed to automatic. So that's the first piece. Second piece is where the roll occurs. And again, we need to make sure that the radius is 30 meters, so that it, it, uh, it's continuous with the previous section. And likewise, we, we need to make sure that the lead-in angle is 0 degrees. And in this case, I have a lead-out angle of 30 degrees, so that uh, the exit of this curved piece is uh, relatively smooth. And uh, the total angle of this piece is 39.5 30, is degrees. And the reason is that we don't want to go perfectly vertical because uh, Newton currently can't export to relative roll with that feature enabled. So if uh, vertical pieces in the node limits editor uh, get, tend to get messed up if you're not using relative roll. So this gets us to 89.5 degrees of vertical, which is pretty close to vertical. All right. Um, and then. Uh, this one will have a 90 degree roll and one of the things that I did is I used uh, time warping transi transition so let's look at that so I moved the center of this roll to the end of the element and if I reset this to center back to zero you can see if you look here you can see uh, moving the center shifts uh, where the roll occurs so I want to make it occur closer to the end of the element. So I set it all the way to 50. And again, I set the speed to automatic. All right. So the top is one uh, curved piece. It has a total angle of 179 degrees. And again, it's not 180 degrees because we want to avoid uh, being vertical. Uh, and then it has, uh, it's, it's a symmetric piece, so the lead-in and lead-out angles are the same. In this case, it's 83.12 degrees for each one. And then I've also set the transitions for uh, the lead-in and lead-out uh, angles to linear. And that just helps with the shaping. You can kind of play around with that to see w w what kind of shape that you want. And then I set the radius to 10.4 degrees. And again, the direction is uh, minus 90, or not minus 90 in this case. The previous two were had a direction of 90. All right. So these are some things we'll discuss a little bit later about how to adjust uh, to, to change the overall shape and what they affect. But let's continue on. So sections 4 and 5 are just uh, the reverse of sections uh, 2 and 1, respectively. So again, this is section four is a curved piece. 
uh, with a total angle of 39 and a half degrees, a lead in instead of a lead out, and as it was in section two, a lead in of 30 degrees, radius of 30, lead out of zero, speed is automatic. And then now the direction is 180 degrees instead of 90 degrees. Uh, and that's to, to make the curved piece pull up. And then last piece again is just the reverse of section one. So I, it uh, subtends an angle of total angle of 50 degrees. Lead in is zero, lead out is, is 30. Uh, radius is 30 degrees and the direction is 90. And again, you can set, if you're going to be continuing, if your coaster will continue on past this point, then you should set the speed to automatic. I want to go back and discuss the third section, the top of the top hat, in a little bit more detail. Because it's actually important that we get this section right, or else the coaster may stall before it gets to the top. Or it might be going too fast over the top. So we need to go back and estimate the speed uh, of the coaster at the very top. So let me tell you how to do that. So let me delete sections four and, and five so we can concentrate on the third section. So if you've been following along, then sections one and two, you will have set the exit speed to automatic. So Newton is calculating the exit speed at the or the speed at the end of the element uh, automatically. And likewise on section three. So this tells us what the speed should be at the end of this section. But we don't really want to know what the speed at the end. We want to know the speed at the very top. But what we do to estimate that speed is adjust the element so that it ends at the top. So I do that by decreasing the angle to about 90 degrees, like so. And now this element ends at the very top of, or excuse me, this section ends at the very top of, of the element. <clears throat> and then we can look at the speed to see what it is. And here you see it's reading not a number, which means that Newton thinks uh, the coaster will stall before it gets to the very top. Now this is where we need to understand the differences between what Newton is doing and what's happening in the editor, the, the No Limits editor. Newton treats uh, the coaster as a point object, whereas in a real system uh, or in the no, no Limits editor, the coaster might be five or six cars long, and it's an extended object. And extended objects, when they're going over sharp hills like this, tend to be going a little bit faster than uh, what Newton thinks it is, due to the fact that Newton is using a point object, a point mass. So, <clears throat> in this case, uh, even though Newton thinks the coaster will stall, in fact, in no limits when you ride the coaster, it will actually clear this element. Now what I found from experience is that if you adjust, you know, what you want to adjust is the lead-in angle as well as the radius to adjust the overall height. If you adjust these two parameters so that uh, it stalls, or Newton thinks that it will stall right at the very end, so you can see I've just decreased the lead-in angle by one degree, and now Newton is saying it should be about 0.95 meters per second at the end, increasing it by one degree, then it says it's stalled. If you adjust these parameters just so you reach that stall point at the very end, or at the very top, that's a good place to stop and ride the element in no limits to see what's happening. And then you can come back and adjust the parameters uh, as you see fit. Another thing that you can control is the overall shape of the top hat. Uh, by, or for instance, if you want it to be more round at the top, you can increase the radius, and then you'll need to go back and decrease the lead-in angle to compensate for the height difference. Or if you want it to be more pointy, you can decrease the radius and increase the lead-in angle. So these are, these are the various knobs that you can turn to adjust the overall shape of the element.